Dear ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to represent our technology here today. Um, my English is not so fluent, so uh, please understand if I hesitate to speak out something. So today, uh, I would like to uh, give you some information about our vehicle, latest vehicle. Uh, as other companies, all OEMs are uh, developing all types of powertrains. So it is the same case for Hyundai. We are developing electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, and also uh, CNG and LNG vehicles. Because in Korea now, all, all taxis is running with LNG. And all buses is running with CNG. Yeah, so uh, Korea is a, com a country where we use uh, different types of uh, fuels also. But ultimately, we think uh, hydrogen can play a good role in this mix of powertrains. Uh, explain like this. If we use uh, EV only, it's like uh, you're a farmer and you're just looking for raining because we can use electricity only when electricity is produced, and we have to match that. But if you have hydrogen car together, it is like you have a reservoir of a lake, so you can, uh, you know, reserve your energy there, and you can use it anytime you want. So it's very safe, and both technology can help together. So we don't think it separately. We started our um, fuel cell development since 2000, and until now we have produced about 200 SUVs and nine buses. So it's not a large amount. Um, you should understand why it is so expensive. For example, when we develop a normal car, when we develop a normal car, we uh, produce 200 cars for just crash test and other uh, tests. So until now, for about 10 years, we built 200 cars. That means we are all, all only producing test cars. It is expensive. For example, um, if you have a water pump, it's a, a conventional vehicle also uses water pump. But water pump for fuel cell vehicle and water pump for just normal car, the price is about five times different. So that's making the whole fuel cell car, uh, car expensive at the moment. But I'm sure it will come down when we have uh, enough uh, production volume. So this is the car, uh, what you can see outside. So this model is designed for about producing about 1,000 cars. So uh, Ricardo just mentioned it's not just like taking off the engine and putting fuel cell system, but this car is like that. So uh, we built whole system as an engine, and we used the same uh, production line as a conventional car. So we use marriage process that the car comes and the fuel cell system just stacked from the bottom. Yeah? So it doesn't take so long to assemble this car. And we used induction motor uh, instead of permanent magnetic motor to not to use expensive materials and rare materials. So, and you can see we have a driving range of 525 kilometer per charge, but now uh, we increased that to about 560 kilometer uh, by new European driving mode. And zero to 100 is 14 seconds, but at the moment, uh, it is 12.5 seconds. So we have that improved a little bit in that also. So the maximum, uh, maximum speed is 160 kilometers, so you won't have any problem driving in highways. Um, this is a uh, practical practicality of FCFEs. Uh, how is it practical to use in your normal day? So, well, one is the seasonal fuel efficiency. So if you drive an electric vehicle and it is cold, you have to turn on the uh, heater, then your driving range comes down significantly. And in the summertime, if you have to turn on the air conditioning, uh, the driving range comes down also. But you can see here, uh, autumn and uh, spring, it is, if you set that to 100, the fuel economy, or you can say just think it as driving range, we don't lose any uh, in summertime. So it is still 100. So uh, the, the car in the left side is our 2008 version, and our new one is the, in the right side. And uh, in wintertime, we lose about 5% of our driving range. 
So it is, uh, what it is mean is uh, it is not so significant under weather conditions. So that is one uh, practical thing for fuel cell vehicle. And this is durability. We still have to improve durability. Uh, that, that, that is a uh, homework for us. But uh, you can see the blue line is our bench test data. And the red dotted line is the criteria that the stack is now end of life. But it didn't reach that until now. It went about 6,000 hours, but it is still uh, not below this red line, which means uh, 6,000 hours is about 12 years of driving. You drive about 500 uh, hours per year. So, uh, and the red dot is our durability test car, which we hire a driver and he drives 500 kilometer every day. But you can see the bench test data and the real test car data is same. And the yellow ones, it reached about more than 1,000 hours now. Uh, this is two cars which is running at Denmark at the moment. So we sent our car May last year, and now it, it is uh, over one year driving, and it follows all the same durability curve. <coughs> so uh, we should improve that, but if you remember about 30 years ago, uh, engine durability was also about 100,000 kilometer. Yeah, so then we have, uh, we, uh, we bore the cylinder and had some uh, retrofitting of the uh, engines. But I think the fuel cell durability is now about that level. So we have to go further. It should run 20 years, 30 years, but still, I think we can run about five to 10 years is no problem. And uh, another practical thing with fuel cell is refueling. Uh, refueling fast is also for customer, but also it is also for uh, refuel station, uh, like ITM power. <laughs> so they have to earn money, so they have to earn often. Uh, fuel often. So three minutes, uh, I think you can charge a lot of cars. But if, you, if your charging time is about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you can charge with one uh, d d dispenser only 24 cars per day. So you cannot make so much money. So that's the, one of the reasons why we have to charge fast. And this is the test data uh, that uh, it is charging at three to five minutes for fully full charging. Uh, so one uh, hurdle for fuel cell is that it produces only water. It is good for nature, but it's, it's not so good for engineers because this water freezes in the valves and everywhere, so it could not start at you know, winter time with it when it is below zero. But uh, now we can start uh, below minus 25 degrees, and you can see the car in the bottom with the snow that is Sweden, very northern part of Sweden, and the temperature at that time was minus 41.5 degrees. Uh, I don't mean we started at that temperature, we survived. So after uh, it went to inside and come up to 25, minus 25 degrees, it had no damage and it just run like a normal car. Even di diesel freezes at that temperature, and you can, uh, we have our coolant, which you can see it is freeze at that temperature also. So. Uh, the survivability is very important thing at that temperature. And these are the hydrogen and electric safety. So many people worry about safety of high voltage and also hydrogen. So we did many tests with crash. So the first picture is frontal crash test with uh, about 50 kilometer per hour with 40% offset. And you can see in the middle graph that the voltage of the stack comes down within uh, about four seconds to 60 volt, which it doesn't uh, damage you uh, uh, by electric shock. So uh, after crash, the voltage drops and it will not harm you. And in the real part, we have our hydrogen tank and we did most severe tests, uh, which is 84 kilometer per hour crash with 70% offset. It had no damage and no leak. And we did these tests with hydrogen inside the tank, yeah, not empty. But uh, first time I was just, uh, ran away a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, it was okay. <coughs> and the cost. Uh, I told you in the uh, front of my speech that it has to reduce a lot more, but 
you can see 2005 cost when we set that as 100. Now it has reduced a lot. At that time, with one co uh, car cost, you can now build a hydrogen station. Yeah. So it's about yeah. You can think about. It. You can ask uh, ITM Power how much a uh, station costs now, which is outside, and that was the cost of vehicle in 2005. But we are planning to reduce it. Uh, we already reduced it 70%, and uh, the car which is made now has reduced another 40%, and, but it is still expensive. So we will reduce about 50% more in 2015, and uh, I hope it will be still expensive than internal combustion engine cars, but, but uh, I think not so a cost which you have to be surprised. And uh, principally, I think a uh, fuel cell car will be a good choice for the future um, because um, it is the nature of science why the fuel, fuel cell is a little bit better than the internal combustion engine. If you, um, if you have an explosion, if you explode if in an engine, the fuel explodes. If it is exploded, then all the particles go every direction, x, y, z direction. But the energy, what we can achieve is only z axis, yeah, up and down as the piston goes. Other molecules hitting the walls, they're going as, out as a heat. But fuel cell or battery, uh, all the electron is working, and electron goes only one direction. So we can gather all the uh, molecule activity, uh, not molecule, but element uh, energy. So. Um, and hydrogen was very problem to receive hydrogen. So if we sent our car somewhere, then we have to look where is the hydrogen station, where uh, is it possible or not. But uh, thanks to ITM Power, we can just, I just call him, yeah, ITM Power. I'll send the car uh, in Spain tomorrow, so please, not tomorrow, but at least a week ago I have to call him. But I just tell him oh, we need hydrogen. Then they put a hydrogen station there. So. It's not so difficult as what we thought before, yeah? <laughs> you can see outside. Okay, in Korea, we have 13 hydrogen stations, but our hydrogen station technology is not that good. It's not public stations. It's all um, research. And we have no uh, 700 bar station we, uh, we can uh, refill at three minutes. So we have to do more. Korea has to do more on the hydrogen side. And... I would like to show you this for another practicability of fuel cell car. NGO called Zero. Uh, we provided two cars to Norway, and they just took our car, started from Oslo, and they drive to Mo uh, Monaco. Yeah, they didn't ask for other stations. They used only existing hydrogen stations. They refueled only five times for 2,200 kilometer of driving. So average driving was about 450 or something like that. And they have uh, drink champagne and some sunny uh, thing we have. So uh, which this means is you don't have to invest so much. Of course, it is difficult. But going to uh, Monaco, uh, Monaco is not, it's not impossible. They just did it. Yeah. So I think. Uh, we can do better, a lot better. One problem was these guys have to drive 80 kilometer per hour in the highway because they, uh, they, there was no hydrogen station. So a truck driver was really mad and they, he called police. So they were caught by us, uh, police, but you know, they managed to come to Mon Monte Carlo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is our, um, this is our uh, milestone or roadmap. So this year we will uh, start uh, production of the model you will see outside. We're planning to produce about 1,000 units till 2015. Of course, 2015 there will be other models from other OEMs, uh, Daimler, Toyota, they all say they will uh, mass produce in time about 2015. So I'm sure the more cars will be at that time with more cheap price, economical price. but. Uh, the way to 2015, we have to prepare the infrastructure, and there is a gap between number of cars and number of stations. So uh, Hyundai wants to fill that gap by 
uh, provide about 1,000 cars till 2015. Thank you very much. Thank you.